Hello girls. So today we look into the evolution of English as a global language and uh, the topic rise of standard English. So let us look into the major points. We know that today's English today English is one of the major languages of the world and it enjoys a prestigious status as an international language we all know that it enjoys such a status now so before looking into that let us first look into the rise of standard english so definitely the um, name evolution is showing you some kind of long trajectory or the path by which english has been evolved into a standard uh, language so let us link, uh, look into this uh, long way, long legacy of English and how it has been formed to today's shape. Okay. So towards the end of 14th century, English regained this prestige status in the court, parliament and literature. Okay. So before that what happened was French was dominating the situation or French was dominating the court, uh, scholars, parliament etc. French has been adopted by all the scholars and the educated people and all the communication especially official communication were in French and that was considered to be uh, a standard thing. So this has been changed in the especially towards the mid 14th century development of english in the 14th century was due to certain reasons one was the advent of east midland dialect and of course you might have heard about geoffrey chaucer who is considered as the father of english poetry and he has contributed very much to english vocabulary all of you know about that Chaucer used this East Midland dialect. That was one of the reasons for the rise of English during the 14th century. Until then, English came to be used more and more in administration. Um, and of course, as I told you, French took a dominant portion of it. Also, with the re-establishment of English as the language of administration and culture, uh, this it has re-established English as a literary language. And the standard form of English language um, has been evolved out of it. Now, let us look into what happened after Chaucer. Chaucer started writing in East Midland dialect and started propagating its it and uh, of course you know Chaucer uh, was um, writing or um, tran uh, was he was very much interested in translating the French text to English. He took themes from French literature and brought into English. All these and also his publication of the work Canterbury Tales was another reason for the fame of English. And then. What happened was, at that time itself, this East Midland di dialect was um, being started uh, in, using in, its usage in the universities of Oxford and Cambridge. So, that was a great shift. The most influential factor was, of course, the importance of London as the capital, as the seat of the court of administration and the focus of social and intellectual activities of the country. And now another most important thing happening at that time is the invention of printing press by Gaxton. So this invention of printing uh, press kind of helped in the expansion of vocabulary. It uh, demanded that there should be um, particular grammar set, set, grammar rules, structure, spelling, everything that 
it will help in the evolution of standard english so these all contributed well in the evolution of standard english then another important point that helped in the rise of standard english is the publication of the authorized version of bible in 1611 so this was a giant step the publication of authorized version of bible in 1611 we already have done with the translation of bible in that the last uh, portion of that as i hope you remember so uh, because it is a uh, rich um, of course you know 30 40 scholars together compiled that bible so definitely it will be enriched with new vocabulary then comes the publication of dr johnson's dictionary in 1755 this also helped in enriching the language very much other factors which have contributed to the evolution of standard english are the increased contacts between various social classes and the spread of education among all classes because of course you know dr johnson period the renaissance period all these increase the importance of education and a particular kind of standard was given to this scholars renaissance of course enriched the language by exposing it to latin and greek you might have already learned the influence of loan words in english latin greek and french words we have taken quite a lot of words from latin french and um, greek to english this also enriched the vocabulary then the reformation and puritanism of course emphasized the study of bible and there comes another set of vocabulary along with it which helps in the expansion of language then the restoration which followed again exposed the language of europe particularly france and a number of french words were passed to into english you might have already dealt with that in the loan words also in the 18th and 19th century centuries of course you know the age of colonial expansion and industrialization which in turn leads to the growth of english across the colonial nations so the writers of this period especially starting from the 19th century which is considered as the century in which what novel began to began as a genre revolved out as a genre so the writers of this period modeled their writings on this earlier um, works and um, started adapting their techniques as well as the narrative techniques as well as the vocabulary and coming to 20th century of course you know there are um, considerable changes in the spelling uh, then we english is supposed to be an open language which is which always takes words from other languages modern standard uh, english is not a standard english it is actually a growing language uh, which always be in a state of flux that is one important point you need to no which is always in a state of flux it is open to changes it will nap, uh, nap gradually take more and more words in order to expand the uh, what expand the vocabulary and also we have started accepting even this varieties of english or branches of english where this grammar syntax might vary but we still take so uh, here comes the importance of this definition was that was put forward by uh, professor it see wild in his short history of english defines he defines standard english as the language spoken within certain social boundaries with an extraordinary degree of uniformity all over the country and standard english is of course also known as queen's english especially during the renaissance period or uh, reformation period and in the um, towards the 20th century then standard pronunciation is known as rp or received pronunciation that of course you know you know, that is what we follow in the daniel jones pronouncing dictionary and as i told mentioned earlier this language is always in a state of flux english is especially always in a state of flux the innovations that we explore and refuse to adopt might become completely respectable and right in the next generation because when you learn the essays of semantics and word formation you will understand how the language and the 
words, uh, status of um, certain words change in centuries. So this was the trajectory of uh, the development of English as a standard language. Now we look into how uh, this uh, language evolved into a global language. We all know that uh, English enjoys a kind of prestigious position as an international language now. And uh, this is relatively a recent development as English was unknown to the rest of the world outside England almost till 17th century, of course. Uh, until 17th century, it was keep on developing in its own state, not towards any, anywhere else. It was in the time of Shakespeare that English began to spread greatly outside England through his place. Various factors such as colonization, migration to America, growth of population etc. lead to the spread of English. Colonization, of course, you know, we have already mentioned in 18th and 19th centuries. Then, and uh, before colonization, it has actually started a large change, uh, started with the, while the people migrated to America. Now, of course, you know the story of Pilgrim Fathers and all. Uh, they carried, uh, the carrying of English to other parts of the world began in the 17th century with the first settlements in North America and continued with increasing impetus through the 18th and 19th century. The English brought to America by the Pilgrim Fathers developed on independent lines, of course, you know, because there is a great slang change between the English, British English and the American English. Above all, that is the great growth of population in the United States assisted by massive immigration in the 19th and 20th century. Of course, you know, all were behind the great American dream that has given the English language the present status. And of course, as I mentioned, we have started, uh, uh, not uh, English has started accepting all other varieties of um, Englishes, even the non-native varieties. And you know that this English is considered as the first language in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, etc. And we, they have started accepting the non-native varieties which have been developed in other African nations, India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, all the Commonwealth nations, of course, the former colonies of English. And you know that English is an important medium of communication in many parts of the world. In India, of course, you know that we have more than 250 different languages speaking in different states. And even in tribal groups, English still remains the medium of communication between educated speakers. Of course, Hindi is our national language, but still. Especially people from Northeast and the South still depend on English to survive on when they travel to um, tra other parts of the country. And it is also widely you know, used as the language of administration and commerce. English is used as a medium, medium of instruction in almost all the Indian universities, um, all, and almost all the central universities. And also the textbooks we rely upon are also in English, especially for the professional education and all. The same is then the case with many other Commonwealth and African countries. Same um, status, English. Um, enjoy the, the same status there also. It is, of course, you know, it is one of the five important languages of the United Nations. Definitely, it has the richest vocabulary because, um, of course, you know, most of the world's English new, uh, newspapers, technical, scientific periodicals are in English. So, we can say that it functions as a link language across the world. And also it is the language of world sports, then radio, television, all this media, telecommunication, internet, everything. Of course, there are regional varieties which are available across the world. We can translate anything to any of the regional language in just one click. But still, English remains like more or less the same medium of communication across the world. And also... With, because of this, definitely it is termed as the window of the world and also it has one of the richest literature in the world because of the vocabulary, advancement of vocabulary. Uh, and of course, we have different varieties of English as I mentioned earlier. So, it is considered as a... Uh, it also helps us to keep pace with the explosion of knowledge, um, scientific and technological advancement. It opens a vast prospect of human achievement 
and it opens us up new horizons beyond it helps us to know about all this what is happening and uh, new across the world all business correspondences are done in english of course you know many of the all major works literary texts are being either written in english or translated in english for a wider reach so definitely we can call it as a global language which connects the world and also not only this there will there are major difficulties confronting the foreign learners of english uh, because there is a discrepancy between the spelling and pronunciation of english english is a stress based language and not a syllable based language so definitely there are discrepancies between spelling and pronunciation and that uh, is uh, quite difficult for a non native speaker to understand of course with the phonetic scripts and other uh, things it is difficult for a non native speaker to understand many attempts have been made in vain to reform english spelling system but it didn't work basically it is a stress based language because it is more phonetic in nature but in spite of these obstacles you all know english has spread far and wide in these days to fast travel and global communication well, now at this moment of course it is one of the most important among the global languages hope you understood the portion wait for the next class thank you